Yo, what's up? It's Transformer. Guys, look, it's Transformer right there. Oh, is that a truck coming? Transformer, there's a truck coming. Oh my God, he has the latest differential attention with noise canceling on. He can't hear us. He's gonna get hit. No! <clears throat> This is the Transformer we all know and love, published back in 2017 by Vasuani et al. While it is still technically the state of the art, the Transformer used in AI chatbots nowadays looks slightly different. In the original paper, the model was designed with an encoder-decoder architecture. The encoder processes the input text, such as a sentence in English, by transforming it into a sequence of contextualized representations that capture the essential information and structure of the input. The decoder then uses these representations to generate the corresponding output text, making the architecture particularly effective for tasks like language translation. But the transformers we use today, especially in AI chatbots, work a bit differently. Instead of using both the encoder and decoder, chatbots mainly use just the decoder part. This is because for chatbots, rather than transforming existing content, it needs to generate responses based on a prior context. So it doesn't need the encoder to process the input text separately, which also makes the system simpler to use. Model families like GBT and Llama are built this way, focusing entirely on generating text by predicting what comes next word by word. And these models haven't changed much, other than introducing variations in attention mechanisms and stacking more layers to improve performance. So today, I have some new interesting progress to share with you. But before that, research progress really doesn't mean anything when we aren't utilizing the full capabilities of ChatGPT and alike, right? Well today, HubSpot has you covered. This time, HubSpot is offering free resources for using ChatGPT at work, which is a comprehensive guide to enhance your work productivity with AI. This is a perfect guide for anyone that wants to get into improving their working efficiency while keeping up on these rapidly growing AI technologies. Aside from the 37-page in-depth guide that they provide for free, there are also other useful visualizations such as ChatGPT flowcharts, instruction templates, content refinement checklists, and a few more. My favorite part is the AI adaptation checklist, which helps me to review a list of optimization methods and identify which ones I can implement to improve my workflow, especially when I'm juggling multiple tasks. So to get started completely for free, check them out using the link down in the description and start growing successfully. And thank you HubSpot for sponsoring this video. Anyways, the attention mechanism at the heart of a transformer is powered by three crucial components, queries, keys, and values. A lot of research has focused on trying to make this mechanism more efficient or accurate. And to give you a quick rundown of how it works, for each token, let's say inside a sentence, the model generates a a query, key, and a value vector. The model uses the Q and K vectors to generate attention scores, which determines the importance of each token in relation to the others. From a design perspective, the query acts as a way for the token to express what information it's looking for in the rest of the sequence. The key serves as a descriptor, indicating what information the token can offer to others. These relevant scores are then passed through a softmax function to turn them into weights that sums up to one. This ensures that the attention mechanism focuses on the most relevant tokens while still considering the entire sequence. Once these scores are calculated, they are applied to the V vectors to extract the actual relevant content that should be passed to the next layer. But where does this KQV vectors come from? So they are actually generated through trainable weight matrices that are multiplied by the input embeddings. The input embeddings is a fixed length of vector that encodes a token semantic meaning. As for the trainable weights, by pre-training it with a large amount of text, it learns to determine how each token should to interact with the others within a context, hence assigning the values to KQV so the model would be able to give attention to the right tokens after some calculations. So when people say that attention can look at every position and decide which one is the most contextually important, this is how it achieves that. And when you do this self-attention in parallel, it's called multi-head attention. However, this type of self-attention is not what we typically use today as it can still be computationally expensive when each query interacts with all the keys. And as language models models scale up, they handle larger vocabularies and longer sequences, which means more tokens to process and more key value pairs to manage. This makes the traditional self-attention costly because it involves a quadratic increase in computations as sequence length grows, where each query must compare itself with every key, and this doesn't scale well for massive models. We need a method to push down this quadratic increase in computation. This is where group query attention comes in as a more efficient alternative. In GQA, query heads are grouped and 
each group shares a common set of key value pairs. Unlike traditional multi-head attention, where each query head has its own unique set of key value pairs, GQA reduces the computational load by letting multiple query heads interact with a single shared key value set. This effectively lowers the number of key value pairs that need to be processed, making the attention mechanism more memory efficient and faster, especially for longer sequences. And it is this reduction in memory bandwidth and computational cost while still preserving the essential information flow between tokens, it has become a popular choice for modern large-scale models like Llama 3.2. But it's not completely perfect either. While GQA provides clear improvements over standard self-attention by grouping query heads, it still has a significant drawback that is the need to maintain a large key value cache generated by the previous tokens. This cache allows the model to efficiently reuse these key value pairs without recalculating them for each new token. But the cache size and the need for frequent access to provide context can let it become a bottleneck as the number of tokens increases. So it is not as ideal for real-time applications that require long sequences. Another innovative and promising approach to improve attention efficiency is DeepSeq's multi-head latent attention. Instead of grouping multiple key value pairs, MLA uses low rank compression to compress the key value pairs into a latent space. This part is a bit like math hell, but intuitively, you can think of the key value pairs as a big 3D cube that grows larger as you add in more words. In traditional self-attention, this cube expands because each new token adds more keys and values, increasing the overall size. And even if you use GQA, the cube still grows just at a slightly slower rate. With MLA, however, latent compression ensures that the size of the 3D cube stays constant even as new information is added. Instead of letting the cube expand, MLA compresses all the new data into the existing structure, making it more efficient and preventing the memory from expanding out of control. But of course, using a compression method means there will be a loss of fine-grained information. MLA's low-rank approximation may oversimplify some data, and the more information it compresses, the more details are lost. Theoretically, it might be expected to perform worse in cases require long and precise context where finding a needle in a haystack could be challenging. However, experiment in its paper did not show any signs of a performance deficit. Anyways, MLA's advantage is the fact that the overhead of attention remains mostly constant regardless of context length, unlike GQA, which slows down as more text is added. But tuning the compression is still more complex compared to the straightforward grouping used in GQA. There is currently also a lot of research focused on compressing or speeding up the KV cache, so maybe I'll cover that more in depth in another video. And so far, the attention techniques I've mentioned are all aimed at improving efficiency. And in general, there hasn't been as much research on improving accuracy. That is not until a few weeks ago, a really interesting idea was proposed in this new paper called Differential Transformer. You see, even if attention mechanisms become more efficient, bad attention would still lead to bad results. And one of the problems right now is that the irrelevant attention scores, which are the information the model isn't supposed to pay attention to, can still distract the model. Since irrelevant information would still add up, it can become quite large compared to the specific token the model is supposed to focus on. And this would distract the model from focusing on the correct answer. The authors call these irrelevant scores attention noise, which basically dilutes the model's ability to identify key information. And what Differential Transformer proposes is to solve this exact problem. It aims at eliminating this attention noise. Inspired by techniques from signal processing, it essentially works like noise-canceling headphones or differential amplifiers in electrical engineering, where the difference between two signals can help filter out background noise. With this intuition, differential attention computes two separate softmax attention maps and then subtracts them. This simple yet effective method cancels out the irrelevant information and amplifies the attention on the critical parts of the sequence. So the transformer now can lock in to perform the task more accurately. How locked in, you say? So their experiment compared a 6.8 billion parameters differential transformer to an 11B transformer, and the differential transformer achieved the same validation loss with only 62.2% of its parameters. On a 3 billion parameters experiment, the differential transformer required only 63.7% of the training tokens to reach the same level as the traditional transformer. On top of that, the computational cost did not increase significantly. For smaller models, Models, there was a maximum 12% increase in computational requirements, but as model size increased, this extra compute overhead dropped to about 6%. And as a side effect of the noise cancelling process, the differential transformer also heavily reduces activation outliers in the attention map. Activation outliers occur because traditional attention mechanisms can sometimes overfocus on certain parts of the input, allocating excessively high weights to a few tokens while ignoring the others. This happens because sender attention uses a softmax function which can lead to sharp peaks in the attention distribution. And these
these sharp peaks can cause the model to concentrate too much on a single token or a small set of tokens, resulting in spiky and uneven activations. This not only impacts accuracy, but can also make training less stable and harder to optimize, especially for long sequence length. So differential attention also addresses this issue by using a noise cancelling process to smooth out sharp peaks, promoting a more balanced distribution of attention across tokens. And by leading to more stable gradients, this reduction in activation outliers potentially reduces the loss of data in lower bit quantization, because now the range of numbers is smaller, which reduces information loss when cutting down floating points. So overall, this differential attention techniques improves the model's ability to focus on relevant context, which is particularly useful in tasks like long context modeling, key information retrieval, and hallucination mitigation. Implementing this into the existing LM system is not as complicated either. In research, they have shown how to implement differential attention with flash attention, which essentially is just calculating an extra pair of QKV and subtracting them. By the way, flash attention is an efficiency algorithm that speeds up and reduces the computer's memory usage of the attention mechanism. So basically a hardware implementation. There are a few drawbacks for differential attention that I can currently think of, like increased complexity or training instability. But the paper has tested models up to 13 billion parameters and proving that flash attention works with differential transformer. Perhaps even combining it with GQA would further improve its speed too. So yeah, overall, I think this technique is pretty exciting. I guess now we can only wait to see what these amazing researchers would come up with next. And if you like today's collection of papers, definitely check out my newsletter where I cover the latest in the hottest research papers that I might not even have time to make videos about. It is a weekly issue that contains both the latest AI research breakdowns and news, so don't miss out. Thank you for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelias, Chris Ledoux, Deegan, Miguelim, Robert Zaviasa, Louis Muck, Ben Shainer, Marcelo Ferreira, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.